had you know names like Bert Oliva and Ray Perez and people from you know that have a, a a global audience and a global impact and this individual we are so fortunate that he is somebody that's local but he also has an impact in other areas and and before COVID um, he would he would host these incredible events in Colorado and, and has a as a huge community um, that that he works with and, and loves I'm going to share a little bit about what he's talking about today, but so um, with your permission, I'm just emotionally. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about emotional aware awareness is productivity and a stress reduction tool. So I don't know about you, but how many want to be more productive? Would like to accomplish more with less time to be, it's like, I want more time to do what I want. Um, travel and how many of you are, are feeling a little stressed and would like to figure out you know are open to ways let's say this open to ways of learning how to reduce it i'm with you carolina um so i'm really excited about about hearing those he's going to help you what you're going to leave with is learning to identify your emotions owning your own emotions um empathizing with others feelings learn about active listening and clear speech uh, Scott Donat is the owner and, and he owner that operates the mobile reflexology business. He's known as the foot guy in Brevard, Florida uh, since 2014. He's facilitated the way through experience and emotional breakthrough weekend since 1989. Um, this is where I'm going to do my little quick plug here. I actually met Scott first County um, almost two decades ago, and they were renting the East Coast uh, Board of Realtors and doing these workshops. And for me, I wouldn't believe this, but I used to be meek. I used to be scared. I used to think that you always had to have this happy face, and you know, you couldn't feel any other emotions other than happy. I don't know about you, but that's the biggest lump of baloney <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, so I was walking around with a lot of fakeness. And what was so beautiful about this workshop is that. Um, I found my voice and I found um, just this, this ability to be able to share in safe space and, and look at some of the things that had happened in the past and really turn them into some of the strengths of who I am, um, am today. And, and this particular workshop, what I, what I later discovered is that, you know, in Hollywood, after actors and actresses act out their part for a year or however long, they're actually stuck in their part. Were you guys aware of that, that they actually can get stuck in their part? And so this work came out of Hollywood to help actors and actresses get, un, you know, like get out of those parts. And so what I learned is that we all get stuck in certain parts. Like we all have things where maybe our mom said, you have, this is, this is how it is. This is how you show up. Um, and so it was really powerful to look at what are those what are those um, parts that I took on that are not mine? And I let go of those and become, so uh, he also, him and his wife, Becky, um, Becky is, uh, Scott, what does she do for NASA? Can we, can you just give? She's a wildlife biologist, actually. She just walked out the door. She's, uh, she's going out to, uh, to Shiloh now to uh, relocate gopher tortoise. Uh, she does the eagle now, uh, she makes sure that the, uh, the fellas out of NASA don't get too excited about building new things until they check to make sure there's no critters. And, and her job is to protect the critters. So that's, that's her group. She just wrote a book as well, uh, a first birders book uh, that came out about a month ago. Beautiful. And so they run an online multi-faith church called People of Diversity. They live in Port St. John and together they have four daughters and 10 grandchildren. And, um, and if you have a chance to follow Scott, he is uh, doing some really great work. And he's also really good at foot rubs and the reflexology. I don't know about you, but he comes over and I'm like, I need my hands because I get the, you know, you're, you're on her phone all the time. I don't know if anybody has some of the hand stuff and the the feet stuff, but he's um, really great. But he's not here to talk about that. He's here to talk about about emotional awareness is productivity and stress reduction. So can we please give him our virtual round of applause? Yay, Scott. Scott, do you need a timer? Do you want me to give you a five minute warning? Okay, sounds yeah, great. Thank you so much. All right, so, um, you know, I wanna jump uh, first on the bandwagon. Um, 
thank you, Nancy, for everything you're doing down there because uh, because that that grant for me changed everything. Uh, allowed me to create a book, which which initially, you know, in in my programming, uh, was not something that was possible. Um, and the money and the time and the permission um, really changed uh, dynamically how I see the world and, and really how I see myself. So it's been a powerful year for me. Um, I wanted to create something for y'all today that you could you could take back to your business um, and that you could apply in, in some small way, perhaps, to your own life. Um, and, and thereby reducing your own stress, right? So it's not just what we're trying to do, you know, at, at the office or, or with our business or with our people, um, but with ourselves as well. I want to I want to knock a couple of things out of the park and just create some um, some walls that we can that we can work inside of. So emotional quotient, um, uh, emotional intelligence, so EI or EQ, is a is a measurement of of our ability to process mo emotions, ours and other people's. So I'm going to read for you a couple of quick definitions, and then I'll just see what happens after that because all I have is jot notes after that. The EQ is the capacity of an individual to recognize their own emotions and those of others discern between those feelings and label or identify them appropriately, then use that information to guide their thinking and behavior to adjust their emotions, to adapt to changing environments. That's a whole bunch more than the standard operating emotional quotient definition. It really gets into not just the level of intelligence, but how am I going to apply that level of intelligence, right? How am I going to utilize the information that's gathered emotionally, combine that with, with, the, with the IQ, the intellect, the intelligence that I already possess, to increase my level and level up so that I can not only communicate better, but I can listen better, I can hear better, and I can receive better, whether that be criticism or just simply the information from my client so that I can give constructive, honest, clear feedback, okay? So the next thing I wanna kind of define for you is empathy. Now the word empathy, everybody's pretty clear with. is the capacity to understand or feel another person, what they're experiencing from within the framework of their reaction and reference, right? So, so I, can, I can walk in another person's shoes. I, I can empathize, feel what they're, they're feeling, what they're feeling. Not what I would feel if I was in their shoes, but what they are feeling in their shoes, right? So typically, we bump in then to an empath who's, who's, who we look at as, as a person who can feel other people's feelings. And it becomes this very uh, woo-woo area. A lot, of, a lot of people find themselves in a place of victim when they have high empathetic skills, when they're an empath. When in reality, they're the most powerful people in the room. They are aware of the emotions that are happening in the room and can move to change those, move, those, those emotions and move the room into full congruence. Change the energy in the room, change the intention in the room, change the mood in the room, right? So these are all the same word, right? It's, it's, it's the energy, that, the flow of what's happening in a space. Okay, so the last piece is vulnerability. And this one scares folks, especially fellas, because this means that we can get hurt, that something can happen to us, that we are left open, that we are in danger of being hurt. So those are, the, those are our cultural understandings 
of vulnerability. Let's look at what Brene Brown says about vulnerability. Uncertainty, risk, emotional exposure. That's it, right? Because we're not talking about going into a war without a gun. We're not talking about going into a boxing ring without gloves, right? We're talking about going to work. We're talking about interacting with clients. We're talking about connecting with people, right? All right, so let's, let's also give a little bit of foundation to why these things are important. If you don't have vulnerability in your business, if you don't, if you don't carry, walk, model a level of vulnerability in your business, you are incapable of creativity because you're not taking a chance. You're not taking a risk. You're not stepping off the edge. There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. Why would I bother to take a risk? I must move from where I am, comfortable. Remember, comfortable is the enemy. <laughs> so I'm in comfortable. I'm in things are flowing, but not going. They're just flowing. I want to step it up. I'm going to have to move into a state of vulnerability. That state of vulnerability is I don't know what to do next. I don't know how to up level. I have to walk over to somebody and say, I don't know what to do next. Can you help me? Because that's vulnerable. That's, I don't know. Can you help? Because the answer could be no. And that's the scary part, is the answer. Right? All right. So, I want to give you a story. In fact, I'm going to try and give you two based on time. And I want you to listen to the part of the story that doesn't have anything to do with this story, okay? So the events that I'm going to talk about are irrelevant. What I'd like for you to listen to, I want you to listen to, is the parts that I'm not speaking about, all right? And that's all the instructions I'm gonna give you, okay? All right, so in 1990, uh, shortly after uh, Desert Storm started, I took over as general manager of Denny's in Cocoa Beach. I met Shannon shortly after this time. Uh, it was a, a multi-million dollar store. It's, it's right down on Cocoa Beach across from, uh, I believe it's a Holiday Inn now, a, a, a larger hotel down there on the beach side. Um, it's a 24 hour restaurant, uh, had three managers. And we were in, in the full groove of sending people over to Iraq and shooting shuttles into space, all right? Now, at that time, Grand Slams were $1.99, okay? <laughs> now, they're like $9 now, <laughs> but at, at that time, they were $1.99. My biggest week was $98,000 in sales at $1.99 a plate. Imagine how many human beings walk through the door, right? So we're talking about, at certain times, an incredibly busy restaurant. But I'm gonna share with you December, and it's still happening today. The first three weeks of December, you can drive a Sherman tank down A1A, and you won't bother a soul. There is nobody beachside. There just isn't anyone. It's that period of time, beachside, where there's just no tourists. Now, that fourth week between Christmas and New Year's, it's the biggest week of the year. Okay, so back to beachside. Week one of my first year at that shop, I cut the schedule down to almost nothing. Like, each cook's getting like a day and a half where it was, they used to work 40, 45 hours a week. So of course I get knock, knock, knock on my door. Hey man, why'd you cut my schedule? It's like, we don't have any business, buddy, sorry. It's like, it's Christmas, man, I'm gonna starve. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna do Christmas? How am I gonna feed my family? How am I gonna, and I'm like, dude, you've been here for 10 years. This isn't a new phenomenon. I cut the schedule because I looked at what happened. This happened last year and the year before and the year before. I said, 
this is not my this is not my issue, buddy. It's not my fault. You knew this was coming, and you could have done a, a, a myriad of things to prepare yourself for this. Not my monkey, not my circus. Now, inside, because I'm an empath, I'm going, what am I going to do for these people? Because I can feel they're scared. I can feel they're upset. I can feel they're angry. I would, if I was standing in their shoes two years earlier, I was a server at the Merritt Island store. I know how they felt, right? So how can I help? I couldn't help them. It's nothing I could do, right? So I go into to the first and second week of January, business falls off a little bit. And, and I go to one of my mentors at the time. I was like, I got to do something here. This, this doesn't work. This didn't feel good. So he suggested I go down to the Barnett Bank, and I go down to the Barnett Bank, and I meet with the manager there, and all of my people cash their check at, the, at his bank. All of my kitchen staff cash their checks at that bank. Now, I was just lucky because they could have cashed it anywhere, but it was the closest bank to the store, so it worked. And, and our corporate checks were drawn off Barnett Bank, okay? so. What I had them do was the bank manager met with my entire kitchen staff and set up for them a Christmas fund. And they took $10 out of every single paycheck they had. And at the end of the year, they had $520 sitting in a bank account ready for them to spend on Christmas because they knew they were not going to get a paycheck that was worth beans for the first three weeks of December. Now, Fast forward to next December, and I want to tell you what a hero I was, right? Because I had totally forgotten that I had set that, that fund up for them. I had totally forgotten that they were doing that for themselves. Because after I set it up, it wasn't me anymore. They did it for themselves, right? They were the ones who continued to put that $10 in that bank account. I didn't make them. It wasn't drawn out of their paycheck. All I did was create an opportunity for them to care for themselves, right? So these are, the, these are the parts and pieces that we want to look at when we're looking at what was the motivating factors for me doing that, right? Because I, I caught heat from, from my managers. When I shared what I had done with my managers, HR was on the phone to me. This is a liability incident. You can't be involved in their safe. Oh my gosh, it caused all kinds. And I just like, sorry guys. Oops. <laughs> I didn't know. And well, they just continued doing it. The lady who was the lead of my kitchen took the same opportunity to double up within five years, bought her own restaurant. Right? She just sold it and is now retired, and she's an uneducated high school dropout black woman from Coco who was not supposed to amount to nothing, and now she's a community leader. Because I said, this doesn't feel right, right? Now, none of that story is because I'm a great guy, right? All of that story happened because I said, this doesn't feel right, I wanna make it right. The people, who got told they mattered, who got told that, that their, their pain is reasonable and real, got to take action on their own, empower themselves, and become something different. I didn't do it. They did it. But they did it because someone said, I see you. Because someone showed up. Because someone was willing to do the work of recognizing who they were. If we can do that in our businesses, if we can do that, for me, I'm, I'm a one-on-one, -on -one, right? I don't have, you know, 50 employees and, and multiple managers and, and a multi-million dollar store to worry about anymore. I'm just a foot guy. I connect one-on-one, -on -one, right? I do a big workshop and, and that's, we do that every now and again, but I connect one-on-one -on -one with human beings and I do what I've asked you to do today was listen past the story of a restaurant and people not having money and listen into 
what happened when people listened to each other, when people really heard each other, when, when people leaned in to the problem and listened for a place where they could act. I couldn't give them any money. What, what am I going to do? Hand them a bunch of cash? I was 28 years old. They hired me because I was cheap. <laughs> and they gave me a salary that was, that was half of what I was worth. Right? So there was no money coming from me. I had to figure out how I could empower them to become their own um, leader, their own uh, motivator. Right? So in the book that I wrote um, over, the, over the respite here, um, one of the things that I talk about is emotional awareness. Um, I didn't want to, to steal the, the, uh, the entire genre of, of EQ or, or emotional intelligence, but I did want to talk about, again, what I asked you to do today, which was listen deeper, right? Because if we can listen deeper, we will always hear what people are trying to tell us. So here's my contention. And this is one of these things that you're gonna be able to take away. It's gonna help you to listen. It's gonna help you to process what you're being told, uh, what you're, what's being shared with you, so that you can have more information about the person who's standing in front of you, right? So two things can happen from that place. You can manipulate that person from that place, or you can serve that person from that place. And I'm telling you right now, serving people from that place is going to, is going to increase your, um, your personal accountability to that person and their loyalty to you, okay? So it's my contention that we are always telling people exactly how we feel. Right? So you walk up to somebody and you start telling them about your day, this happened, this happened, I went down and saw Sue, we had lunch, we talked about this and this, we went over here, we did this, I talked to Bob, Bob did this and Bob did that, and, and you know, Bob really troubles me, and, and anyway, they're gonna be fine, and then I went over here and did that, right? So we heard a series of events, just like you heard me talk about a restaurant. But if you're sitting in front of that client, you heard them talk about specific details of each of those encounters. That's really what they're talking about. Right? So what's the conversation? What's the message that people are trying to give you that are underneath the story that they're telling you? Because they're always telling you the other story. They can't not. It's a subconscious dialogue that continuously comes out of us so that we can notify the people around us how we're doing <laughs> so they can so they can work with us and we do that on a subconscious level so we're never thinking about that but we're constantly doing that so as you're as you're working with clients as you're working with with um, employees you're working with your kid your spouse your best friend if you are willing to listen, and it takes paying attention, it takes being present, you have to focus your energy on what, it, what are they really saying? What are they talking about, right? So um, I think the three pillars for emotional awareness are to be comfortable with your own emotions and the emotions of your clients, employees, or family. Now that requires that you do something. That requires that you spend some time identifying, being present with your emotions, right? And, and then getting okay with them. You know, whether that takes moments in the mirror, whether that takes journaling, um, whether that takes one-on-one -on -one conversations, therapists, you know, support processes uh, or processes that, that you can implement, right? But you have to be able to um, process that stuff, to be able to talk about and get comfortable with your personal emotions so that you can um, hear other people's emotions and not have them throw you. So when they describe an emotion of, of resentment or anger or deep sadness, it's not a foreign subject to you. It might not be where you identify, 
might not be how you see the world, but you can, you can move and empathize to be able to understand how that person is feeling in their body, right? So the next piece is I have to be able to and willing to model vulnerability so that, so that my clients, my employees, my loved ones feel comfortable moving into a place of vulnerability with me, right? So I have to model that so they know what it looks like and it creates a level of safety for them to join me there in that vulnerability, right? And the vulnerability is, I don't know what to do. I don't, help me, right? Because someone who's vulnerable and, and, is, and is being attacked, their thing is help me. Well, if I don't know, and I'm, I'm in, a, in a state of panic, my people, their, their frustration, their, they came into that fourth week, they were a mess. We had $98,000 a week. They were a mess. I had to spend my entire week in the kitchen. The next year, they did the same $98,000, I took the day off. See what I'm saying? It's like they were different people because they, they were supported in a way that had them showing up different. And it wasn't about the money. The money provided them the tool to show up, but they made that money and it changed how they came to work, right? So the last piece, and this is the piece that I want, I want most of us to be able to give because there's gonna be at least two or three people in here that already possess that, that empathetic skill, that they are that empath, they, they already, have that awake and alive intuition and you're working with it every day. Others of us do not, right? So that gut feeling, that, that hot flash, that moment where you know something and you know you know it, but you're not allowed to say it unless you have proof. It's like, that is a lie, right? I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to have a reason for no. I don't have to prove to you why I think, why I know a thing. I know a thing because I know a thing. Now, here's, here's one of the things that happens to me. People are like, wow, you must be psychic. You know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm feeling. It's like, no, I have like a degree in, in emotional physics, right? Because it's math. You told me how you were feeling. You emoted, you, you shared with me the level of how you were feeling. You told me all these things. It's like, if you wanna put me in a box, call me a carny con artist, right? Because I read you. Now, the power of reading people, again, once again, you can be the carny con, and you can use that information to manipulate your employees, manipulate your spouse, manipulate the people in your life. You could even tell yourself that I'm manipulating them for good. I'm serving them to a good thing. It's like if we can just come out of manipulation and move into a place of service, the loyalty goes up, the productivity goes up, the, the collaboration between boss and employee, between employee and boss goes through the roof. People show up to do a job at, at twice the level they did before just because someone sees them. And, and we, we, so here's the, here's the big, here's the big failure, right? Because we run around and we tell people that our employees are the most important thing. But as soon as sales go down, we dump our people, <laughs> right? And we tell ourselves that we're a good boss because we've made the bottom line. But all those people, right? So if we can, if we can maintain our people, it's kind of like maintaining our body. If we do that work constantly, then our body stays physically fit, stays in shape. We stay, if we do that self-care, then, then when we show up, we have the energy, we have the alertness, we have the, the mental acuity to be present when we're working. If we're not doing that self-care and if we're eating yucky stuff and we're staying up too late, it's the same thing. Well, emotionally, it's the same, the same dance. Everything that's true physically is true emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So it's like, if you just move those good behaviors from the physical into the emotional, 
it's the one place where you can exercise a muscle and it gets stronger, right? So I can, I can come in with an EQ score of 120 and I can go to work for the next year. I can get some therapy. I can start doing some meditation. I can just start doing some, some mirror work and some journaling, really get into learning and discovering who I am and how I tick. And all of a sudden I'm up to 135. My business has improved. My, my relationships, whether they be personal or business-wise or, or just my employees, are connecting at a deeper level and, and folks are showing up at, and, they're, and they're engaging more, longer and, and, and deeper. And I, we didn't change the business. We didn't change the product. But you did change how you showed up. And it was so subtle that it just moved people to you. They're like, so, so why are you more deeply engaged with Scott this year than you were last year? Last year, you would call him every four or five months. And this year, you're buying a 750 12 pack twice a year. Well, because Scott engaged with me. Well, what do you mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I just feel good when he's around. After he leaves, I feel good for like days. Right? Well, it's, it's not because I'm special. I'm just a regular old bald guy with a bunch of grandchildren running around. What happened is, is stuff that I learned in the restaurant business. It's if you connect with people emotionally, you make friends. <laughs> you know, they're friends. When, when my clients talk about me, they don't talk about me as a therapist. They don't talk about me as a reflexologist. They say, my friend Scott. He's coming over to do my feet. And it's amazing, right? Well, reflexology sucks, guys. It's kind of uncomfortable. It doesn't really feel good in the moment. It feels good afterwards. And, and the improvement in your body is great, but the actual feeling of reflexology, not really fun, right? So why do people keep calling? Why do people say, I love him? Why do people go through that process? It has nothing to do with the reflexology. It has nothing to do with the essential oils or the tuning forks. It has everything to do with the emotions. So why do I have, why did I have people follow me from restaurant to restaurant to restaurant? Because you have to imagine that someone comes into a steakhouse because they like steak, right? Well, why did they leave the steakhouse and go to the rib house and then leave the rib house and go to the salad bar place? Well, because I did. And then they're like, because you're the best server ever. So I, <laughs> I forget your stuff. I don't even know your name. I know what you ordered last, but it's because we made an emotional connection. It's because we connected in our hearts, right? And it creates a different energy, a different atmosphere for people to come and play in. So, got it? And I'm gonna open up to questions right after this piece. So, when I do my workshop, we do our introduction and we say hello. And then I take my, my leadership team and my assistants outside and I check in with them. How you doing? You know, we're going to get ready to go into a big weekend, 36 hours of intensive emotional breakthrough work. Let's see how you're doing. So when we do all that, I remind them that we are a group of ordinary people creating an extraordinary atmosphere for magic to come and play with. If you're willing to work with that kind of magic, and create that kind of atmosphere for your employees, for your clients, magic can happen. So, up to you all for questions, thoughts, evaluations of the crazy bald guy. <laughs> all right, give me a round of applause before we do questions. Oh my goodness, that was really, I had so many things to, to share, but um, anybody have any questions to, for Scott? Um, real quick, Shannon, it's the foot guy. You, I, I want people to know you put the F-O-O-Y. It's foot guy, right? Oh, I just cut and paste what was in the application. Sorry. Good. Okay. I'm so glad you told me. Okay. Yes, foot guy. You know, it's, a, it's like you can't remember his name. It's like, you know, that foot guy. But, you know, so my follow-up on that is that they always tell you when people are around you with negative vibes and all that, you run the other way. What you're saying is right. Yeah, I, I, I get it. You absorb it, 
and uh, so that was that was a good great awakening for me. I would I would ask you not to absorb it, right? Except, because right. because that's that's that place where where empaths become victims, right? Because your job isn't to absorb their pain. You think it is because why else would you feel it? Well, your job is to walk over to them and start feeding them love, right? You walk over, start feeding them love, and, and no human doesn't like the food of love, right. right? So you start, and they start eating that love, and all of a sudden, their negative energy changes. Don't absorb it. It's not yours, it's, right? Right. Because that's, that's where we as him get beat up. Don't let yourself get beat up. Be the tool that you're supposed to be. Bring love where love seems not to be. Right. No, fascinating. Enjoyed mm. it to the fullest. I have to get your book. Yeah, if, <laughs> 17th, 18th, and 19th, I will put it out to you and, uh, and ask for your support. What's the name of it, Scott? The Emotive Reflex Method. Ancient healing for a modern world. Okay, you may have to put that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna let us know. I got a motive, and that's as far as I go. <laughs> to write that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're gonna let I'm us know when it's listen. out then. Seventeen eighteen. I, I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, energy on it uh, beforehand, and I will pass to Shannon, and and we all know how Shannon passes things around. So. And the book is about what is a little bit of, I mean, oh yeah, extension of what you, you're discussing. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's a brief hi from me. This is my life, right? And then the history of reflexology. And then what I do, reflexology, essential oils, emotions, tuning forks, wellness spheres, just laid out. And then I've got a self-care, a homework, and a business integration. It just talks to everybody, the, the lay person, the professional, um, the part that I'm most proud of in the book um, that I'm going to lean on the hardest moving out from here is the self-care component, whether it be teaching uh, practitioners how to teach self-care or simply teaching lay people how to, you know, personal self-care for themselves. Can I ask, um, like, obviously we all come from different families and, and they deal with things obviously differently. Some everything is a catastrophe and it's like they move from one disaster to another. And I remember, you know, somebody I worked with and I said, you have so much drama in your life. You have more in one week than I've had in my entire life. Um, and yet, so, but I could be seen as then very stoic because my family isn't that emotional crazy, um, you know? And so, but, but that can be just as stifling. So it's sort of like the two extremes of, you know, everything's a disaster and they react to everything at this heightened level. And then the other who's just kind of like, not all, for me, I'm not always aware of others' emotions because my family doesn't react like that. And I was brought up that way, that we're very calm. <laughs> we just carry on and, you know, but I think that's a detriment too, because um, I may not be as perceptive to what others are feeling. Right. So, so, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, um, we'd work through that together while we're working on your feet and, <laughs> and point and pointing out the areas on your feet that hurt that represent that. Right. Cause they're good. They're going to be there. Okay. Um, same with the person who's stuck in their story or stuck in the drama. Right. Um, from a workshop perspective, um, I want to get you out of your head and into your body and, and, and feeling and expressing a, a more rounded uh, emotional body, right? Because being stoic keeps you very locked in this box. But it's not about you're gonna become somebody, something different, that's your personality, right? But to be able to, to have that, that thought process, to have that ability to to function under pressure and under fire, which is that stoic person can do that very, very well, but also have this, this more full and more rounded emotional experience in your personal life and, and even in your business life where you, where you get you know, more joy, more sadness comes with it too though, right? 
but that is the fullness and the sweetness of life, right? So everything becomes fuller and deeper and richer and wider. And again, for that person who's, who's in their story and in their drama, we need to, we need to you know, help them escape from that story, escape from that drama, and then, and, then, and then make a secondary separation of who am I gonna be without my story or without my drama, right? How am I gonna function without the stimuli of constant drama and constant terror, the dragon or the lion is constantly chasing me, right? So I've got this adrenaline all the time. Well, well people, folks feed off that. I mean, at some point in our life, we have felt anger, we felt it dissipating, and we called it back because it gave us energy. <laughs> so, so know that, know that we're a that we're capable of that, and 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 again, I think you're accurate in those are two of the of the extremes, and and we really are wanting for folks to have a full experience i want to balance you know i've got a fan above me and it's rotating and it's very smooth but if i take one of those fan blades off and i set it down it's going to wobble right because the fan blades are supposed to move in a balanced energy so if i've got my emotions and my and my and my mental and my spiritual and my physical and they're all balanced and they're all being fed and then that then my my world the fan is going to spin effortlessly if it's not it's going to have lots of wobbles and jobbles it's not about better than it's just smooth you know what i realized today too I, reflexology in my mind was always physical for well-being and all that but it's so connected emotionally oh yes Amazing. all body work all body work yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank but, you, Scott. So Thank you. The, the book cannot come out fast enough. Right? So, <laughs> Thank you, guys. I enjoyed it thoroughly. That's, thoroughly. that's one of the things I say about Scott is it's kind of like three or four therapies at once because you do get to, you know, he can go, oh, this has to do with your liver and you might have a little unresolved anger or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really fascinating. And then bringing in the oils and, and what I love about you, Scott, is that, um, you really show up with no judgment, but compassion and love wherever people are, are at. And you are such, you're able to hold that container no matter where they're at. And Nancy, I, I just, how you show up for me and what I see is that you, part of why you have raving fans is that you do care and you do check in and you do connect with people and you do hold space to hear their, their woes about business. And so I think that you, um, you know, just my experience of you is that you have that ability to really be present for what's going on with people. And you can sense, I mean, I've heard, hey, is something going on? Are you all right? And, and so I think you're, you're very gifted in that. I think you have a big container. <laughs> And, and I'm just going to piggyback one last thing before is that I, I used once I did Scott's workshop, you know, I've produced hundreds of events and I actually use this same principle with our committee our, and, and it was when I showed up and allowed people to share and be heard, we raised more sponsorships, sold out our event months in advance. And, and some people in the business world is like, we don't have time to do that. We got to get down to business right? And I promise you, like, showing up and giving everybody a voice and being able to be heard and being able to be present, help the agenda move along quicker. But everybody, because they felt cared about, yep. they cared more about the success of the vision, right, than, than anything. So it just totally transformed how I was doing business of thinking, got to be quick, you know, got to get to the agenda. And it's like, no, these people are here. And I want to know why are they here? And how can we help them? And, and so thank you, Scott, for, for that today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Nancy, I have one announcement or giveaway. Um, but is there any final announcements before we close this out? So uh, I think you covered, um, I think we covered everything at the beginning, but um, as Shannon mentioned, there are sponsorships available for some of the events coming up, which give you exposure in your business. So if it makes sense, um, sit with Cindy or myself, we have an engagement calendar of all our events coming up and some make sense and some don't, but you know, we want to um, make sure that you get plugged into an event that may be the best uh, exposure to grow your business. So um, that's it. 
Thank you, Scott. That was fabulous. Thank you. Uh, it was really, really wonderful. So next month we have um, Patricia and uh, Patricia Simino coaching. Um, she is going to be talking about being the CEO of your success, uh, master your mindset, move forward now, and maximize your uh, results. So uh, she's a, a remarkable uh, life coach, uh, mindset coach, professional speaker. She's got a lot of energy. She was highly recommended because she just, she just radiates lots of wisdom. And, and even though it says CEO of your success, it doesn't matter if you're, C this isn't being CEO of your business. This applies to any of us, wherever, you know, whether we're here to help spread the word of a good, you know, a good project that we're with or, or company um, that will help. And then I have a rare opportunity where we are, um, working with a stem cell company and they're they're actually bringing in doctors and and um and uh they're putting people up in, in a hotel and they've actually had a couple people cancel so they have um a uh this thursday they have an event and they're putting people in a hotel in lake mary on wednesday night so if anybody has this curiosity about stem cell or wanting to learn more about any of this please reach out to me um, I put my contact information in here because I just was announced this morning that that they have a couple of of rooms where um, our dear friend Bert and Alexa leave Alexa, Alexa's grandmother passed, so they're not going to be there. And and so I said, let me just see if there's anybody else that's been been your name. I recently had stem cell surgery, and oh my gosh, it's made a big. And this isn't about surgery. This isn't about any of that. It's just the the awareness of that. So so let me know, Nancy. I love you. Carolina, can we give Carolina a round of applause? You make it happen. <laughs> um, definitely mark on your calendar the mayor's event, the multicultural event. Those are in the chat. To save the chat, click on the three dots. So if you open up the chat, you'll see where it has three dots. And if you click save the chat, that'll have everybody's um, contact information. Uh, we would love to, to you know, to stay connected. And remember, this is just the beginning. It's when we connect together afterwards that, that some of the, the magic happens. And thank you, Scott, for years of rubbing my feet and helping me get in touch with all of my emotions. And, and I feel like it's helped me a, a ton to love more. Nancy, any other final remarks? Can we say farewell? We can Thanks. say farewell. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> and register for next month. We look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank Thanks, you, Shannon. Bye.